common struggle in the gaming industry is finding the balance between familiarity and ingenuity. When launching a brand new title, having fans lost at sea isn't exactly helpful when trying to execute a brand new vision, which is why Classified was such an important map to get right. And luckily, Treyarch did. Well, mostly. As far as reimaginings go, I do believe that Classified was and still is almost perfect, the key word there being almost. But besides it being an amazing reimagining, it was also completely necessary. You see, Black Ops 4 was one of the most ambitious Zombies titles to date, and Treyarch had planned to test fans harder than they ever had before. Launching three Zombies maps that were packed to the brim with content was bound to be overwhelming, and even before the game had launched, it was very unclear where the community was going to focus its energy when it came to solving the main quests. This made Classified vital to the Black Ops 4 offering, as having a straightforward map helps provide players with a sense of comfort. And while fans couldn't have known what Classified would be like on launch day, Treyarch certainly did, and I don't think it's a mistake that this map was much simpler in terms of its overall design. Even with all the chaos of blue screens and crashes preventing players from achieving the round 150 ending cutscene, Classified didn't undergo the same level of scrutiny that the other on-disc maps did. But why? And how has this map aged alongside the community after nearly five years since launch? These are just some of the many questions I hope to answer in this video as we uncover the many secrets the Pentagon has to offer. So strap in, ladies and gentlemen, as we finally explore Hangar 4. This is Classified. We could all learn from Monkey's bravery. Freak Fox! I can feel the joy spreading to my joy bits! I would just like to quickly highlight that this is a Black Ops 4 retrospective series, and while I'm going to do my best to keep each video self-contained, there will most likely be overlap as other information will bleed in from other videos as this series is all tied together. So I really strongly recommend watching these in order, starting with Blood of the Dead, and you can find the link for the playlist right beneath the like button. After the unrealistic expectations were set from the Black Ops 4 reveal in May of 2018, Treyarch went a little bit radio silent while they were preparing for the the next leg of their marketing tour, which would take place during the largest gaming industry event, E3 2018 in Los Angeles, California. Now, it was all but guaranteed that Treyarch would be revealing multiplayer content at a booth somewhere inside E3 so that both fans and industry insiders could have a chance to preview the game. However, there was also a Zombies exclusive press conference for Black Ops 4 scheduled to take place off the LA Convention Center's main campus. And I know what you must be thinking, who cares if it took place on or off campus? Well, the way that E3 works is that all of the big AAA titles will have a spot in the convention center's main floor with devs setting up booths and renting out private areas for hands-on playtesting. Call of Duty was no stranger to this business practice and used to do this frequently before E3 had officially closed shop. They would have a booth as well as a private area for people to playtest and meet the devs for interviews, and this is no cheap task. It costs a pretty penny to be able to secure prime real estate when it comes to setting up an E3, which made things all the more confusing that Treyarch had a showcase off campus where only a hundred or so people would be in attendance. And while we knew that this was a COD Zombies exclusive event, there weren't many details as to what would transpire. But all of that changed a couple weeks before when Treyarch briefly came up for air, dropping their new seasonal content model called the Black Ops Pass. Not only did this showcase the updated monetization practices for Black Ops 4, but it brought to light something that I don't think the Zombies community was ready for, a fourth map. You see, at the bottom bottom left hand corner of the marketing material, there was a logo for another Zombies experience titled Classified. And while fans were not 100% certain what the map was, if you looked closely enough, you could see a certain five sided shape cut out from the inside of the letter A. This all but confirmed that a five remake or remaster was inbound and every Zombies fan was absolutely stunned. As time went on, the days felt like weeks as excitement continued to build and the E3 event finally took place on Wednesday afternoon, June 13th. 2018. This private zombies event was extremely intimate as only three Treyarch developers came to speak, one of those being Jason Blundell, and they were all interviewed by none other than Jeff Keighley. Even though this event was small, it was historic as the figureheads in this room have all impacted our lives in some way, shape, or form. I was lucky enough to be there watching these iconic developers discuss the history of zombies as well as their burning passions for the mode. And of course, it wasn't long before Jason began his cheeky games and revealed 
exclusive information. Uh, you also announced you're doing a, a fourth um, map classified, yes. right? Break it down. What can you tell us? What can I tell you? Um, <laughs> Unclassified. Yeah, the, the, clues the, the, the clues in the title. Well, it's, um, it's going to be based in the Pentagon. At this point, there was no more speculation, but confirmation instead, as a fourth Zombies map would be there at launch and it was going to be classified, a five reimagining. But that wasn't all, because Jason had a little bit more to say. This guy just gave him a shake, was that your guess? <laughs> okay, there's a bat, what was the bat? Which, uh, which crew then? Ooh. Which one? <laughs> okay, let me, let me tell you this one. Wow. So it's the, um, it's the Ultimus gang. Bringing back the Ultimus crew was quite a shock, as they had not been seen since the finale of Black Ops 1, and I think it was safe to say that Zombies fans were over the moon. Get it? This is why you come here, right? For my awesome jokes? Right? Like and subscribe. To be quite honest with you, as exciting things were for the community pre-launch, I do think that this was where the first bits of worry began to creep into the community's subconscious. And as I touched on in the previous Blood of the Dead retrospective, fans ultimately knew that having three heavy-duty zombies experiences on day one was going to be an intense burden and that something was going to give. We just didn't know what it was at the time. And now Classified had been brought into the mix, which only raised more questions. Most of those questions surrounding the idea that ether maps were possibly going to be reimaginings only. Even still, it was too soon to tell what exactly was going on, and so the community did what the community did best. We hung on to hope. Another question that began to bubble up to the surface was, why 5? While everyone wanted and still does want a Zombies Chronicles 2.0, 5 was never on the short list of maps to be remade like Mob of the Dead, Transit, or even Die Rise, which makes the fact that it was pushed by the devs all the more strange. 5's launch continued the tradition of hiding behind the Call of Duty campaign, leaving fans with a pleasant surprise when the end screen credits began to roll. And as you might expect, map reception sits in a unique space where it's generally a appreciated by most fans, but isn't necessarily loved. And it seems like Jason Blundell and the developers knew that, and they wanted to subvert our expectations once again. Look, quite a few people in the community were very vocal about Five not being their favorite map. That's exactly the reason why I'd want to do a map like that. But when I was first started talking about it, we're like, God, but people aren't really a fan of that map. It's like, yes, <laughs> that is the reason we must go there. <laughs> right? I remember watching this interview back in 2018, and my initial reaction was that Jason could do no wrong. But looking back after five years of experience, I think his perspective of the community at this point in time was actually a bit off. It's no secret that Jason loves to toy with the fan base, but I think after Black Ops 3, his cryptic nature was starting to wear thin as he seemed to start pushing the wrong buttons from time to time. I'm not going to sugarcoat things here. I believe Jason Blundell is a creative genius Genius, one of many on the Treyarch team, and he has helped to build the zombies mode into what it is today. That being said, you can only pull the rabbit out of the hat so often before people start to figure out your patterns and become sick of the trick. It's one thing to leave fans guessing about how the game is going to play or how the storyline is going to unfold, but when it comes to the actual content in the game that people are paying for, as in those maps that we are going to spend time in, expectation subversion is not always the way to go. I I understand that many people in the community may not have had 5 as a top 10 map, even if it did need a facelift for the modern hardware, but that would have been much better suited for a Zombies Chronicles 2. And while I personally think Classified is a fantastic map, the idea of reimagining it and making it part of the main course of content was the wrong call, especially when fans, myself included, were craving original content for Primus and Ultimus, which I dare say was markedly deserved. Treyarch is masterful when it comes to presentation for their Zombies maps, and one of the more masterful examples of this is inside the menu of Black Ops 1. That dystopian horror that lies before you lets the player know to prepare for something more than just a video game. And when loading into 5, the first thing that I always notice is just how clean and sterile everything looks, and to be completely honest with you, it creeps me the hell out. The offices, the war room, the labs, every location has this feeling that rings hot 
hollow, as if Five's entire personality is having no personality at all. But if we take a look at Classified, Treyarch took Five's stylistic approach and completely flipped it on its head. Starting things off, we have one of the most unique and beautiful intro cutscenes in all of Call of Duty Zombies. The modern and contemporary style for this cutscene is something we haven't really seen before, but what really steals the show is the big band soundtrack playing beneath it. Compared to the CGI or the still image cutscenes from the later season, the classified intro cinematic should feel out of place, but in fact it resonates deeper than anyone could have expected. When looking at the actual map itself, it's clear that now, Classified has some of the most detailed environmental design of any map since Black Ops 2, and I would argue has some of the best visuals in all of Black Ops 4, full stop. While I believe from the bottom of my heart that 5 needed a graphical update from its otherwise infinite shades of grey and brown, I didn't expect Treyarch to go so hard when breathing new life into this classic experience. Not only did the developers bring in the design overhaul, but they added new play spaces as well. These particular visions blended together to bring about a level of chemistry between the play space, visuals, and the gameplay that I don't think a traditional remaster could have achieved. The overturned desks and messy hallways, the flashing lights of the server room, every space is dripping with style and has the player dying to explore, hoping to discover something magical beneath the map surface. The choice of color palette here is superb, as the deeper you make your way into the map, the more things feel distinct from one another while having a nice unified tone which makes the package complete by tying that metaphorical bow. Starting in the spawn area, rather than only being able to explore the main office, hallways, and elevator, the whole section behind the metal detector traps are now open and are completely viable to train zombies in. And while this alone doesn't revolutionize the experience, it was definitely a welcome enhancement. Treyarch didn't change much in the war room, but they did add an entire server room on the back end of the map. While this doesn't do much in terms of creating a great space to camp or train zombies in, its function was to primarily help you escape by tunneling your way to the teleporter located against the back wall. The laboratory was not changed at all, which was the correct call to make. This area is supposed to keep players disillusioned with its maze-like design. Altering that in any way would be more of a disservice than anything as this map is known for its claustrophobic atmosphere. But there was one area that was added to Classified that I don't think fans predicted, but was certainly a welcome change. This addition is known as Groom Lake, aka Area 51, aka the spawn location from the Black Ops 1 map, Moon. Not only did we get a 5 reimagined, but we got a moon spawn room reimagining. And while I never would have guessed these two locations would be married in a million years, that's the best part about having teleporters in your game. You can go wherever the hell you want. This rendition of Groom Lake is by far my personal favorite. While of course the gameplay style is a drastic shift from the original concept, I like that I am able to play in this space using the traditional survival and round based mechanics. Taking place at night with the moon peeking through the clouds, the cool blue tones give a nice soothing feeling amongst the pandemic. Ammonium. And of course, since Pack-a-Punch is here, Area 51 is more than just a beautiful landscape, it's crucial to your survival. The only real complaint I have about Classified is that it doesn't punch me in the gut like Blood of the Dead does in terms of its somber atmosphere. And while of course not every experience should carry the same emotional burden throughout it, something about Classified feels different. Maps like Blood of the Dead, Alpha Omega, and Tagged or Toten feel connected, almost like siblings. But Classified feels like an only child, it's much more of a standalone experience comparatively, especially when you look at all Black Ops 4 has to offer. This is not a negative as Classified does a lot of things right, bringing about beautiful change with its art design, new play spaces, and of course, the storyline. The Aether storyline is one of the most complex narratives in the Call of Duty franchise. Not because it was intended to be, but because over the years there have been many cooks in the kitchen all inserting little story beats here and there, and over the years it has evolved to, well, something like this. Over time, many wires had been crossed, and in the minds of the lead Zombies producers, they thought it would be best to create a multiverse where a lot of the incidents that were taking place were happening simultaneously or just outside of one another in an alternate reality. It's genuinely a mess. Because when we started kind of writing the story for, for 3, yeah. there was only actually probably four or five ways we could take it. And by the way, that's not a criticism of the past, that's more mm, like just when we kind of laid it down, we were like, there's this way, that way, that way, that way. You know, I'm, I actually share your opinion, which was about, about multiverses and well, so it kind of hurts you as a writer. Yeah. Creatively, yeah. it's just like, well, we'll just take all the weight out of everything. And if I was to sit here now and tell you the alternates we could have done, mm -hmm. you would pick the one I picked. 
<laughs> because here's the thing, the alternates ran out of road very quickly. Oh no. This is why Jason Blundell and Craig Houston created the Premise Crew. It was supposed to help smooth the edges by creating a self-contained story to be the center mass, allowing all other subplots to float around or branch out of. But you see, the issue is that all of these other storylines were weighing heavy on the Aether timeline, and the pressure was causing the narrative to buckle, leaving the community with no answers to some of the more confusing aspects. Quick side note for those who may not be super familiar with the zombie storyline, the premise crew, which consists of Richtofen, Dempsey, Takio, and Nikolai, is the crew that exists from Black Ops 2's origins all the way up through Black Ops 3 and 4. The Ultimus crew also consists of the same characters, but they are older versions of them from a different multiverse and take place in World at War through Black Ops 1, and then they make a return in Black Ops 4. Craig Houston, the lead writer for COD Zombies, has not been a fan of the Ultimus crew for some time, as they were shallow stereotypes of their respective homelands. And while these caricatures do make for some hilarious one-liners, there isn't a lot of depth, which leads to a lack of interest from the creator's standpoint. While fans were digging in their heels as to whether or not 5 was worthy of being remade for the Black Ops 4 engine, Craig Houston was juggling a different set of problems as he was completely reluctant to bring the Ultimus crew back to the limelight after all of these years. In a weird way, it's it's funny, I remember saying this when, when we did Classified. Because we'd spent so long with Premise, since Origins forward really, and we tried to make them more realistic and give them a lot more emotional resonance, which I definitely think we achieved, you know. That emotional journey that we'd taken them on, that was, that was hugely important to me. So when we first decided to go back to Ultimus, a little part of me was a bit, oh, they weren't as much fun, they didn't have as much, but once I started writing the jokes again and making myself laugh a lot, initially there was a bit of a resistance from me to bring back Ultimus because I thought we'd progress the characters. Yeah. But doing classified and then doing this where we get them to together, it's, you know, it's the best of both worlds, it really is. While I completely empathize with Craig in this situation, I am very glad that they decided to bring back this crew as it really allowed for some fun and interesting storytelling in the beginning of Black Ops 4's life cycle. And while I don't consider myself a zombies lore expert, the classified story seems to weave together a lot of loose ends from the early Ultimus days, and this all starts with the cutscene Treyarch presents before the player's journey begins. Starting off in Shangri-La, the Ultimus crew acquires the Focusing Stone as they are trying to escape. Dempsey accidentally overloads the teleporter with the Wonder Weapon, which sends them off course and forward in time to the Pentagon. Samantha Maxis is also involved in this kerfuffle and is still trapped in the MPD on Moon, where Ultimus is supposed to go. While this is all occurring, Gersh and the Pentagon Thief are in Russia on the map Ascension, testing out Gersh's new device. Gersh teleports himself to God knows where, and Samantha forces the Pentagon Thief to travel to the Pentagon to release zombies on our crew. But before the thief can stay and get comfy, he is sent away in another teleporter to a dimension unknown. Samantha leads the zombies and the Nova 6 crawlers around to bring Ultimus to their untimely demise, and then the screen fades to black. Before Classified had released, Jason Blundell mentioned in passing that it was going to really split the community down the middle. To this day, we're not sure what he meant, but I would wager it had to do something with the method of unlocking the cutscene of this map's main quest, if you can even call it that. Typically, a Black Ops Zombies map begins with our crew loading into the map and completing a set of somewhat arbitrary steps in order to quote-unquote beat the map and unlock a cutscene that influences the storyline. And unfortunately with Classified, things did not unravel the way Trey had planned. The classified easter egg, in the most literal sense of the term, has the player get to round 150 where the cutscene will unlock as a reward. This was supposed to be a nod to the high round community, as well as some light experimentation away from the formula that the community had been conditioned to expect with our easter eggs. However, like all the other maps at launch, there were some problems. The first problem was stability. Similarly to Blood of the Dead, Classified also suffered from the same terrible optimization at launch, and the game wasn't stable enough to handle players getting to the rounds necessary to achieve the reward. The second problem was that Treyarch initially had the round counter threshold set to round 255, and while this was another nod towards the high round community inside of Black Ops 3, as the round cap for that game was 255, it was simply an unreasonable ask for the community to get that high of a round, so they changed it to 150, which is still not low enough. But aside from the performance instability and the round 255 debuff, the main issue here was the 
lack of direction plaguing the community about this easter egg. Players didn't have the slightest clue what to look for, and due to the game being broken at launch, no one thought that a high round challenge would even be in the cards. Not only has Treyarch never done anything like this before, but it wasn't achievable if people even wanted to pursue it in the first place. In fact, the only hint that we had indicating there was a quest on the map was a little puff of smoke in the stat menu. Inside of Black Ops 4, when you press the menu button, an image will pop up on the bottom left hand corner of your screen, alluding to what step you are on inside of the main quest. But with Classified, it was just empty other than this elusive puff of smoke. And the only reason we knew it wasn't a visual bug and was the actual Easter egg was due to the fact that the smoke icon would disappear in casual difficulty or from custom mutations. And so after three weeks of radio silence from Treyarch, the community was just baffled at what they were supposed to do when it came to solving this map in its entirety. Everyone was doing their best to work together, but we were all stumped and just assumed that there was nothing left for us to solve. That was until the unthinkable happened. Eventually, leaks and rumors began to spread behind the scenes that there was indeed a high round easter egg and we needed to beat round 150 in order to unlock the cutscene. The fact that we had to rely on leaks to solve this was a huge deal. Spoiling easter eggs is blasphemy to the COD Zombies code of ethics, but these were unprecedented circumstances, so the majority of players were completely understanding and willing to let it slide. And finally, after three weeks of lying in wait, the easter egg was completed by the gaming revolution Revolution, DK Dynamite, and Pluto. Hello guys, this is the Game of Revolution here, and I'm sorry for my excitement right now, but we have just gotten the classified easter egg ending first in the world. To get the classified easter egg ending, you have to get to round 150. Yes, 150. We all thought you had to get to round 255, but see- In order to complete this easter egg, players had to brute force the game in some way to make sure that their play session wouldn't crash or blue screen. People were using techniques such as cartoon mode or a glitch in custom mutations that would allow for dogs only, which not only sped up the process but made it incredibly easy. And I by no means am judging anyone. Many people tried to unlock the cutscene legitimately, but it was simply impossible. It was getting so bad that even popular Zombies YouTubers were sharing footage with one another since viewing the ending cutscene non-artificially was so rare to come by. The way that this has been found, discovered, solved, etc has been really, really unfortunate. Essentially, the Black Ops 4 base game is too unstable to support you getting to the round you need to get to, 150, to actually unlock this cutscene. And so the only way to do it right now is through glitches. But to no avail, there were still people out there who were upset that players would have to resort to these tactics as it was impure to the integrity of zombies. This was really no one's fault but Treyarch's as they released a buggy AAA title. They created an impossible easter egg to solve and they provided no communication or insight as how to solve it. And even after all the trouble that the game had caused the community, we still managed to get the job done. What's strange to think about all this time later is how much simpler all this could have been to achieve. A basic round 100, or round 115, of course, makes the most sense, and there's actually even DLC maps in the Ether storyline where there are round 200 Easter eggs, which totally could have been utilized in some way to unlock Classified's cutscene. The point being is that Treyarch could have gone many different routes with their creativity, yet they chose to implement the most unintuitive approach of them all. Fortunately, in 2023, Treyarch has patched and stabilized the game to the point where it's achievable if you set your mind to it. Unless you're on PC, like myself, of course, and you're game freezes four separate times in the 130s and 140s. rip my life. For most normies out there, myself included, there is really only one good way to beat the round 150 easter egg, and that is the shield strategy down in the labs. I am sure if you are a talented high round player, there are better methods out there, but for simply shutting off your brain and getting the job done, this is the way to go. I do think it's fair for me to make a community-wide declaration and state that this easter egg hasn't aged very well at all, and while it was a nice idea for the high round sect of our community, it was simply too costly for the reward in mind. So what the hell happened in this ending cutscene anyways? It seems after Moon ended, the Ultimus crew teleported to the Pentagon where Cornelius Purnell and other members of the US government placed Ultimus in a jail cell inside of Hangar 4 until further notice. Paradoxically, we are playing as Ultimus in Classified while the other Ultimus crew is currently jailed. And not only are they imprisoned, but you can actually see the location in which they are being held just outside of the map in Groom Lake. Once we hit round 150, the 
cutscene begins, and we can see the confusion taking over as Takio realizes that they had just watched the Earth being destroyed, yet not only are they back on the Earth, but they're still alive. Dempsey and Richtofen argue about why Richtofen is conscious, as before, his soul was detached from his person and he was comatose. But, in typical Richtofen fashion, we don't get any direct answers. Not from him, anyway. Seconds later, Primus enters through a single teleporter inside of the jail cell, confronting Ultimus about the Great War and convincing them to follow along in their epic adventure. They do not understand. The Earth, we saw it destroyed. Yet, here we are. It's more time travel bullshit, Tech. Just hasn't happened yet. Speaking of BS. How the hell did you get back in your body, Doc? <laughs> Does it matter, Dempsey? I'll tell you what matter. Americans still give Nikolai his vodka. Is that your plan, Nikolai? To give up and drink yourself to oblivion? Or do you want to make a difference for once in your life? You! Ah, oh, Shiza. You four must come with us. In time, it will make sense. Now. Intruders on the base. Anchor four. Now we must go. Quickly. There is a war to be fought. War? What kind of war? A war unlike any you have ever seen. In other videos, we've touched on how the Aether Cycle is an infinite loop from Origins up through Revelations, with our characters visiting Alcatraz in between Zetsubo Nushiba and Gorod Krovi. In this new timeline, Alcatraz still takes place after Zetsubo, but since the Chronorium changes, the cycle breaks, revealing the events of Blood of the Dead. Classified takes place after Blood of the Dead, or at least exists alongside of it, and the cutscene we witness occurs around the time that Primus escaped Alcatraz using the teleporters created from Richtofen's blood harnessed by the Dark mechanism. While this is no doubt one of the more difficult parts of the storyline to grasp, this map and its cutscene did provide answers that the community so desperately craved. And now that Zombies fans finally had a bit more information and our crews had finally realized their fate, it was time for the community to do what the community does best, speculate. Throughout this video, I have really tried to make a distinction between the term reimagining versus the word remaster. I really think it's an important distinction to make since Classified isn't a remaster and it's not a remake, at least not in the way that something like Verruckt or Shangri-La is inside of Black Ops 3's Zombies Chronicles. While those maps have had certain kinks ironed out and overarching changes made when it comes to gameplay and graphics, Classified almost shares nothing similar with 5 other than the core foundation of playing inside of the Pentagon. And while I know that that many Zombies fans love to poke fun at the gameplay changes made inside of Black Ops 4, those same gameplay mechanics actually provide a lot of variety when it comes to the basic survival map formula, and you'd be lying if you said Classified wasn't better off for it. 5 is not an easy map by any means. It has tight quarters, a weak wonder weapon, a mini boss that steals your weapons from you if you're not careful, but on top of all of that, it just wasn't very fun to play as you were very limited in your plan of attack. But 5's foundation was strong. It just ultimately needed a few tweaks to make the map more approachable as well as replayable, and Treyarch most definitely succeeded in bringing their vision to light. The Black Ops 4 perk system allows players to get creative and tackle both old and new spaces alike while providing a ton of different ways to do so. Players have the option to camp in elevators, train the new office area, or run around like a psychopath in Groom Lake. And I'll be damned if you don't have a fun time doing so since you're able to navigate classified with purpose as Treyarch upgraded the teleporter system from the broken unpredictable mess from inside Black Ops 1. Speaking of Groom Lake, I think this might be the best place in all of Classified. Not only is it a beautiful space to simply exist in, but it's modular, rewarding, and creates some fantastic play-by-play -play moments. Initially arriving in Area 51, you will notice that there is a massive amount of debris in the way, preventing any ability to train comfortably. But after surviving for three rounds at a time, the debris will fly into the sky piece by piece, allowing for more ground to be covered. However, it's not as easy as you would expect. Firstly, 
right? You can't just simply stay out in Groom Lake the entire time. After the three rounds have passed, you need to head back to the Pentagon and teleport back to Groom Lake continuously for the clearing to take permanent effect. But trust me, it's totally worth it. It may take a little while, but it's a really fun challenge or pastime if you're looking for something a bit different when it comes to BO4 gameplay. But that's not all. We are rewarded with a bonfire sale as well as a max ammo for our troubles. The bonfire sale is a wonderful reward as it allows you to pack a punch weapons cheaply, which is great for switching weapons frequently and on the fly if the occasion calls for it. And while the bonfire sale is a great reward, it's actually a callback to five in regard to the Pentagon thief as after he was killed, he would drop a bonfire sale reward for the player as well. The Pentagon thief is an interesting mechanic. And when I was initially drafting up this script, I had been thinking about whether or not his removal was a hindrance to classifieds overall gameplay. Initially, I thought, well, yes, of course it hurts. This was the mid round mini boss for five. It's part of the identity that made this map unique. But with Black Ops 4's point system, the gameplay loop, the teleporters and Groom Lake, I actually think removing the Pentagon thief from the gameplay is the right call. Could you imagine if he was there during the round 150 Easter egg challenge? He would have pissed everyone off so much it would have never been solved legitimately once to this day. So while under different circumstances, I think the Pentagon thief would have made a wonderful addition to the classified milieu under the current conditions in which we see ourselves in today, I would have to give Treyarch the stamp of approval in terms of his removal. Albeit, I am indifferent on this one, so let me know what you think in the comments. Even though the round 150 Easter egg is technically the main quest for classified, over time, the community had sort of dubbed Project Scatty as the true classified Easter egg quest, mainly because there are traditional steps to it. But all it truly is, is just a quest to build the map's wonder weapon, the Winter's Howl. When looking at this quest objectively, I would have to argue that it's honestly just not very fun to do as it's very unintuitive. But it can be essentially boiled down to this. Find four pictures with four codes, input the codes into the computer, clear the first round of debris in Groom Lake, and acquire the weapon. And while it may seem simple on its face, it's a little more tedious than you may have remembered. After opening up the map and turning on the power, we have to make our way to the war room to pick up a key for an office desk upstairs that contains a picture of Doris with a code written on it. Then head down to the labs and throw a grenade behind a structure outside of the map, and another image with a code will spawn on the wall, with the image being Shangri-La. The third time is in the panic room behind a television, and in order to access it, we need to enter DEF CON 5 by flipping the switches in a specific order so we can interact and move the television to reveal the image of Kino der Toten and the corresponding digits. Finally, there are four portraits of American historical figures, and they need to be shot in a specific order with a pack-a-punched weapon to reveal the last number, an image of Shinonuma. But wait, there's more. We make our way to the war room again and enter the digits into a computer in a specific order based on the images we collected. The order is Shinonuma, Doris, Shangri-La, and Kino der Toten. Now it's time to teleport to Groom Lake, survive three rounds, wait for the debris to lift, and grab your wonder weapon. Now, I want you to do something for me at home if you can. Without rewinding the video or looking up a guide, leave a comment with the step-by-step -step instructions of how to complete Project Scatty. Don't worry, I can wait a minute, I got time. Okay, time's up. This is exactly the part where you say, damn it. And this is the part where I say my point exactly. Fortunately, the Winter's Howl is a substantial upgrade to its predecessor from the days of Black Ops 1. It does a lot more damage, has way more ammo, a faster fire rate, and a faster reload. It's just an all around great weapon to use, but you can easily get it from the box. So everything we talked about is essentially worthless. Generally, I advocate for always building the Wonder Weapon, but in this case, with a quest that's so tedious, there's generally no point, so why waste your time? Unless you enjoy it, then more power to you, no shame. Out of all the zombies offerings inside of Black Ops 4, Classified most certainly has the least amount of side content to sift through. But that isn't an insult. The only side quest that really comes to mind is the Knock Knock Easter Egg. And while this is a pretty cool way to farm points early on in the game, it's not exactly a golden spork knife or a secret variant for the Winter's Howl. By combining bits of lore and applying a modern twist, Treyarch presents an opportunity to become nearly set up before round five. After heading to the main offices, begin knocking on the corner door and listen for a quote from McNamara telling you that he is busy and to leave him alone. Continue doing this same process over and over again while McNamara becomes increasingly frustrated. Once he is fully agitated, knock one last time and listen to Samantha Max's angrily scream. He said, leave him alone! Leave her alone! 
Nova 6 crawlers began pouring in, providing the perfect opportunity for knifing enemies to build up points and open up the entire map. What's really special about this is that this is the first of many quotes from Samantha taunting you throughout Classified. Whether you're completing Project Scatty, the Knock Knock side easter egg, or just going for high rounds, having Samantha occasionally make digs at the player is very awesome and it adds a subtle bit of atmospheric tension. It's a shame, however, because a Samantha Maxis boss fight or something radical like that could have been implemented here in some way, shape, or form. And while I know it probably wouldn't have made much sense via the storyline, I would be remiss if if I didn't at least mention this fantasy I have been harboring for the last half decade. Aside from Project Scatty, there isn't exactly a ton of side content to strive for other than your typical audio reels, story easter eggs, and building the metal detector traps. But in a sincere way, the simplicity of Classified is its strong suit. Sometimes jumping into an experience simply to kill zombies while immersing yourself in an amazing play space is all you need, and that's something that Classified excels at extremely well. I have mentioned this before and will likely continue to keep mentioning it, and that is that Treyarch has always had a bit of an issue with curating other modes for zombies outside of that core survival framework. With BO4, these other two modes were known as Rush and Gauntlets, and I believe that they both have a seat at the table inside of zombies, even if they don't always hit home. While making these retrospectives and playing these side modes again with my new analytical lens, I find myself realizing how hit or miss certain bits of content can be. When there is a main quest or traditional objectives to pursue, the side modes end up having a lot more meaning. But when the main gameplay loop in the map is basic survival, the need for other modes becomes a little less clear. The only real distinction between Rush and a regular game of Classified is the pacing. In a regular game of Zombies, you can take your time climbing up the rounds, but Rush just throws you into the deep end, getting you into the action much faster. Rush is also about boosting up your score multiplier, and when your multiplier is high, the faster your specialist weapon charges, allowing wild moment-to-moment -moment action. The only only way to lose your score multiplier is by getting hit, which you can avoid by having your shield out, but that only lasts so long. The specialist weapons in the Aether storyline aren't built for Rush like they are in the Chaos storyline, which ends up hurting the player in the long run. The Viper and Dragon specialist from the Chaos story have a decoy effect built into it and it charges up so rapidly that zombies will never damage you to lower your score. Using this technique in combination with Victorious Tortoise makes playing on those four maps much more feasible than on any of the Aether ones. All in all, I don't really think Rush is that fun on Classified, and the classic survival experience is much better, with more freedom to adapt to whatever playstyle you prefer. The Classified Gauntlet, on the other hand, This is a good time. Treyarch created a great set of challenges here with Deathcon 5. They are super accessible and feel very appropriate to the corresponding rounds and are suited perfectly for a map with Classified's bone structure. I try to do all these gauntlets with no elixirs as I really want to see how difficult they are compared to the map's core DNA. And it really helps to provide new insight into how Treyarch is thinking about these maps as a whole. Some of the other gauntlets in BO4 have been extremely poor in terms of pacing, where the challenges will hit a brick wall and some of the other challenges will just rapidly spike up in difficulty when it's completely unwarranted. One of the main aspects that makes gauntlets great is having the ability to plan. When starting the gauntlet for the first time, you have no idea what the challenges are, but as you progress, they will unlock in the menu, and then you can begin planning as you retry again and again. It's a very rewarding gameplay loop, but sometimes Treyarch will throw a wrench into said foresight, making the player complete the actual challenge on the corresponding round, which is just needlessly aggravating. Well, Classified's Gauntlet has none of that tedium. In fact, the devs did a really great job of building each challenge off of the previous one before it, and you can feel a steady inclination of difficulty as you progress from round to round. I think my favorite group of challenges is surviving using the RK7 pistol only, which you have to do on round 4, 16, and 27. There is also a fun challenge where you are randomly teleported around the map without your consent, which all leads up to the final showdown on round 30 called Doom Lake, where the player must survive defending Groom Lake before being rewarded with the gold medal.
While Classified was and still is an odd choice for Treyarch to reimagine, I am definitely glad that they did. It's a clear and definitive upgrade compared to 5, and it also fits surprisingly well inside of the Black Ops 4 ethos, even with the gameplay mechanics most seem to dislike. We did lose some of the elements that brought about a unique feeling with the original map, one of those elements being the all-star cast of characters, Fidel Castro, Robert McNamara, Richard Nixon, and of course, JFK. But I believe that having Ultimus is the better choice, a clearer choice, and not just for the ether timeline, but because these characters are part of our childhood as well as the foundation of the zombies mode. While most people love to hate on BO4 zombies and we'll talk about how awful the launch was and the DLC season had turned out to be, Classified always seems to get a pass. And I'm glad it does, because it's a damn good map. It's certainly a shame that it was infected with the same stability issues that the other launch maps had. It's certainly a shame that the community couldn't figure out how to solve the main easter egg. And it's certainly a shame that that same easter egg takes 150 rounds to unlock. But that that was the map that we got, and today, I look at Classified as the map that we have. And while it isn't perfect, I believe it has aged alongside the community elegantly and in cadence with the entire body of work that is the Zombies lexicon. Treyarch took a huge chance with not only reimagining a map with low popularity, but they also brought back an old crew while tying up the loose ends the previous story had left behind. I will always admire Treyarch's experimentation, even if sometimes they go about implementing it in the wrong way. I want them to keep trying new things, to keep pushing back boundaries and expectations, because if they don't, then zombies will become boring, stale, and lifeless. And I have to say, the risk was worth the reward. Thank you so much for watching another Black Ops 4 retrospective, and I will see you in Alpha Omega.